This is the Real Deal Podcast. A couple Thursday thoughts on this 16th of January 2020. Um, host of Real Gerald Quinn. I won't won't keep you long. <clears throat> Just a couple minutes. Uh, you have Carlos Beltran out as the manager of the Mets. He was out when he was basically never in, never managed a day <laughs> with the New York Mets, but he's tied into this. Uh, this cheating scandal, the stealing signs scandal with the Astros and Red Sox with Cora and AJ Hinch and the uh, Astro general manager out. Um, thinking about this for the last couple of days, th- there's no question that baseball had to move in this direction. If you're Rob Manfred, if you're the organizations of you know the Mets, Astros, and Red Sox, and and here's why. Baseball right now is not a is not a popular sport. It is no longer and hasn't been for the last ten to fifteen years the, the the national pastime. That is football, with the NBA being a getting closer and closer as sec, you know second. Um, baseball's ratings are not very good. The attendance hasn't been good for the past few years. So, if you're baseball, this was the last thing you needed. You need going into the twenty twenty season. So what you do is you just clean house. You eliminate this. You try to best eliminate this story coming into the season um, as best you can. Um, had they kept those managers on, uh, those questions, even if they, even if let's say they were suspended Beltran and Cora for a year, just like they did Hinch, the talk would have still been about those managers over coming into the season. It's not something that's not a narrative that baseball wanted. So just get rid of everybody. Get rid of get rid of everybody. Start fresh. Um, you know, if you have Rob Manfred, you hope that by March, spring training, February, that in our twenty four hour news cycle society, that people have moved on. Remember, you'll have, you know, people will be talking about the draft. It's an election year. Is um, you had some of the NFL draft that is you have, you know, you have a number of things going on in entertainment in the entertainment world as well that that can divert people's attention. March Madness will be coming up around that time. So, if you're baseball, you just hope that um, this isn't a major story going into spring training. I don't think it. I think that they're smart from a standpoint that you take the hits. You take the hits right now. Right now. People are killing baseball. People are ripping, you know, ripping baseball to shreds. That's fine. Like, now is the time to take the hits. And even now, you know, in a couple of days, we're going to be talking about Green Bay, San Francisco, um, Kansas City, and uh, Tennessee, and up and, and soon upcoming Super Bowl, and, you know, NBA trade deadline. So there, there's enough things going on in around the sports world, in the world of entertainment. The Oscars are coming up. Uh, will be coming up soon to kind of to kind of divert people's attention away from this story. This was a this was story. This was a story about power and jealousy. Uh, it was a famous line in American Gangster. Success has enemies. If this were the, the say Baltimore Orioles, this does not come out. Houston Astros are a successful team. They had one. 100 games, three straight years, won a championship, been in the World Series twice in three years, and was kicking everybody's ass. And anytime you're successful, someone is looking to take you down. And if you give them, if you give them a hammer and a nail, chances are they will take you down. Houston has nobody to blame but themselves in this situation. Um... I don't even, the sad part about this, I don't even think they had to do this to win championships, to win. Like, two things can be true. I don't think this, I don't think the sign stealing or using electronics to steal signs were the, were the reason why Houston was winning. The reason why Houston was winning because they had the best players, they had the best pitching, they were the best running organization, they were drafting the best, they were developing players the best, they had one of the best managers. That's why they were winning. Similar to New England. I hate New England, but the bottom line is I think I can attribute 
probably one of the New England of our New England six Super Bowls to cheating. I think the first one definitely they won that Super Bowl because they cheated with against the Rams with the Spygate for sure. But they still won five other Super Bowls. So you, even if you take that one away, they still would be tied for second with the Cowboys and 49ers for all time Super Bowl wins behind Pittsburgh. So, again, two things can be true. You can be the best, and you can be the best at cheating. Houston was the best team, has been the best team in baseball the last three years, and they've been the best at cheating. And, again, look at the organizations who were hurt by this. New York Yankees, Los Angeles Dodgers. Those are the two crown jewels of baseball, period. Yankees, Dodgers, in that order. So it was the power of those of those organizations. Um and listen, you had an owner, excuse me, you had a, a commissioner who wanted to make his mark, who wanted a, who needed a defining moment. This was a defining moment for Rob Manfred, where he could say, hey, I'm for the integrity of baseball. I love the sport. Nothing, no team, no player, no owner, nobody is going to be, no one thing or entity is going to be above our sport. So he hit and he hit hard and, you know, baseball will move on. The game will move on. Um, these teams will move on. Managers are replaceable. Now, again, the Ludlow, the, the, the baseball man in, in, uh, in Houston, general manager, president, that guy, that's going to hurt because you can replace a manager, but replacing guys like, like Mike Rizzo, those guys are hard to replace. Those organ, the Mike Rizzo's of the world, the um, like the, the Cub. I can't think of the um, the uh, Cub general manager Epstein, Theo Epstein. Those guys, those guys are hard and almost impossible to replace. But there's no question in my mind that this had to be done, and baseball had to clean itself of this stench. They could not be connected to this. Come late February and, and early March. And the bottom line is Manfred, you know, ha has to, you know, he, he in essence works for the owners. So enough owners put pressure on you. You got to make a move. And they, they, again, he hit and he did what he had to do. So the sport will move on. Uh, Odell Beckham has an arrest warrant uh, for, again, for smacking a security guard in the ass <laughs> during – during the celebration in the LSU locker room. There's so many layers to this story. Um, first of all, I don't, again, I don't know what, I don't know where Odell Beckham is in his life right now. Um, I don't, don't think he's a, does drugs. I don't know if his, I don't think he's a type that's, that's out there, you know, doing stuff that, uh, alcohol and drugs and things, things of that nature, doing stuff to hurt his body and things of that nature. But o Odell Beckham, I look at Odell Beckham as a pure narcissist and he's going to crash. He's going to crash at certain at some point. You can't be that. And I, the word I use is you can't have that much delusional privilege. I can't even call it irrational confidence. I can't because I'll be, it'd be disrespecting Deion Waiters delusional privilege you can't have that much delusional privilege to do something like that and at some point in his life is going to backfire on him and again i don't wish anything negative or bad to happen to anybody but he's going he's going to get life will humble you he at certain point he's going to get humble this year was not humbling because he's using the, the injury as an excuse in terms of why he didn't perform or the coach or baker mayfield or you know other players it's, it's never odell's fault it's never Odell Beckham's fault, ever. But at a certain point, he's going to be humble. Trust me. It's just, you know, karma goes around things, you know. You know, karma is karma. But um, I wouldn't want that guy anywhere near my franchise, near my organization. There's no way in my locker room, ever. Ever. Like, the throwing around cash, I can understand that, even though it's dumb. But you're, you're, you're stunting, you're trying to impress these, these young players, these young boys, these young men who, who look up to you as an, NFL, as an NFL star receiver and what have you. But smacking a security guard in, on the ass with, with a million cameras, 
That's just saying you just don't give a fuck whatsoever. You give zero fucks about anybody or anything. So he has his coming um, big time. I mean, it's absolutely coming. We're going to do some couple. We're going to do some programs over the weekend. Uh, we is, there's a big power episode coming up on Sunday. You know we're gonna be all over that um, Sunday afternoon as far as the power recap episode 13. I'm predicting this this will be a top three power episode, and of course we will have the conference championships covered and do a little NBA as well. That's gonna wrap it up for this brief edition of the Real Deal podcast. I'm out.